in the last in this decade, we talked a lot about open data, about indeed about how do you collect it, how do you store it, how do you uh, share it. Um, and it's been very much about getting governments to understand that they actually have a lot of data that is valuable. I think indeed we are, we are past that phase now. We're looking at how that data can be put to better use. And there was the assumption that this would just lead to economic activity. Have the data, put it out there, and people will start making business with it. Well, we know that that doesn't happen. You need to curate it. It, it takes uh, much more work to actually uh, do that. I think um, the real focus of the government should be um, empowerment of the people um, and uh, allowing people uh, more control over their environments, and that's what the data could actually do. Um, but also, um, the government can basically f um, articulate those things that they want to have done, and with the data, putting that out there, allowing other parties to deliver that, uh, instead of trying to always um, first supply the solution, and then ask people to participate in the solution. So it's another way of thinking, and I think that is where the true transformational power of data lies. To engage citizens, universities, businesses, they, uh, they need to see the value. So um, I don't think uh, you, can, you can engage them by articulating a project uh, and it's very kind of supply driven. You have to find the things that they want to do and enhance that. So just putting data out there, data sets, is not going to do it. I think uh, what it is going to do is to d articulate what, what citizens want. Um, and get them participating in, in, in actually designing the solution. So co-creation, I think, is a very strong way of, uh, of engaging people. The key themes for me would be more on the opportunity side. So not, yes, privacy is a big issue, and, but I would say if instead of talking about privacy, talk about transparency. Give people more control uh, and, and basically communicate better of how the government is using the information and actually allowing uh, the people to, uh, to benefit as well from the data that the governments have and uh, to, uh, to give them services. Just having your data open is not, doesn't make a government transparent. Everything and every activity of a government open, uh, ensuring that you have APIs for everything, that would make a big I think a big shift. Um, you can imagine that um, if you're gathering data, just putting a data set out there doesn't tell you anything about how the government is actually using that information, uh, how efficient it is. You know, so it's also the kind of metadata about what the government does, how it's spending its money, how it is selecting projects, how it is actually um, allocating funds or subsidies. Those kind of information that are. The kind of, the, that's the kind of data that you would like to make government more transparent. I never really understand this discussion about um, who owns the data. Uh, because someone generates it, sometimes unconsciously, we all generate data. Do we own that? Is that part of our lives? Maybe in some sense. Um, does the, uh, the person or authority that analyzes the data, processes it, produce useful outcomes, do they then own the outcomes or do they own the data? I think these are very difficult discussions and they, they become very theoretical. I think we, we're all, uh, what we really want to do is make a lot of data, data available in a responsible manner so that uh, people don't feel that their privacy is infringed, uh, but then make the, make the data available to the community. And it's up to the community and those people and organizations that do something productive or useful with the information, that's where we should focus. And um, if the discussion about ownership of data would disallow that from happening because someone claims ownership, I really don't think that is a very, uh, very productive way of thinking about this. So I think cities um, have the, 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 nearly the, they have the motivation to compete with each other. And that's, that's good. I mean, it's good to be competitive because you're forcing yourself to outperform um, the standard. Um, and any city that wants to be the best, I recommend that, it's great. Um, but on the other hand, um, you should not um, underuse the opportunity to collaborate. And um, I think we've all, we're now aware that where the economy is going, it's much more about sharing, and there's a lot is about um, about actually co-creating. 
So why would governments, uh, city governments, be exempt to that? And I you can see it also here in the Netherlands, but in, in also across Europe. The more we can actually collaborate, have, have joint platforms, uh, and support each other in delivering better services to citizens and businesses, um, we actually are uh, doing a better job collectively. So there's a nice balance there between uh, competing and being ambitious and, and don't be too ambitious with your neighboring town, but be ambitious with the best in class. And that best in class might be far away in Asia, it could be in the US, it could be like in Medellin in Colombia has done a great job. Um, so look around and, and compete with the best, great, but collaborate with your neighbors.